Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, my name is Elizabeth McCauley. I'm one of the pastors serving here. I'm delighted that you are here this morning. Um, as a nation, this time of year, we take uh, the opportunity to thank those who have served on our behalf in the armed forces. So if you have served, uh, will you rise so we can thank you? Is there anyone here? Thank you. Thank you. There is so much that we take for granted that you helped to make possible. So thank you for that. Um, we are going to uh, roll into a very bodaciously beautiful service of worship, giving thanks to God for all that is. So will you rise as you're able and let us sing one of my most favorite hymns because it speaks truth. Let us sing. be seated. I invite you now to
quiet your hearts and join with me in a time of prayer. O oh, Creator God, what a gift it is to be here in your presence on this fall day. We thank you for your handiwork, for the colorful leaves and berries, for the busy squirrels and flights of birds, for the fresh, crisp air, and for the warmth of coffee and cider. We are grateful for the sisters and brothers with whom we share this hour of worship. We thank you for new friends and old, and especially for our guests this day. As we enter into this time of praise, help us to open our hearts to the presence of your Holy Spirit. Help us to put aside distractions so we may behold your goodness. And may we take the time to notice your, aben your abundant blessing for ourselves and for all your children and all creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the one who came to lead us to you. Amen. All right, good morning. My name is Sam Evans. I am the Next Generation Ministry Coordinator here at our church, and I would like all the children to come forward, please. I'm going to talk to you about two swimmers today. One is named Kieran. One is named Katie. There was a boy at one of my churches, a high schooler, who could swim the 50 free in less than 20 seconds is really, really, really fast. Kieran was a very, very fast swimmer. And one day his parents invited me to go watch a swim meet with Kieran. And I got to see him swim. And you know what the other parents from the opposing schools were saying? They're saying, we can't wait till Kieran graduates so our kids can win a race. That's what they were saying. Now at this meet, Kieran was a fantastic swimmer. Jumble. And uh, he was really fun to watch. There was another girl named Katie, and she was super brave. Katie loved to swim, but Katie had braces on her legs. She walked with braces. She still wanted to swim. She wasn't going to let it stop her. So they had a flotation device around her waist, and she got in the pool, and she raced against the other kids. Did she win? Probably not. No, she did not win. The other kid, the other girls finished, and Katie still hadn't made it to the first end of the pool. And do you know what happened? Did the kids make fun of her? No. Do you know what happened? They all started cheering for her. Katie, Katie, Katie. And the whole pool erupted in this cheer. Katie, Katie, Katie. And it went on for almost 10 minutes because that's how long it took her to finish a 50 free. Kieran finished in less than 20 seconds, and it took Katie almost 10 minutes. Katie, Katie, and her teammates were on their feet, and they were cheering. And kids from the other schools were on their feet, and they were cheering. Katie, Katie. And she finished, and they all cheered for her. Isn't that amazing? Do you know that Kieran was cheering for Katie? He, was, he wasn't even on her team, but he was cheering, Katie, Katie, Katie. So I have a church question for you. Who was honoring God more, Kieran or Katie, with their talents and what they had? Who do you think was honoring God more, Kaylin? Hmm? Who was on? It's a trick question. Katie and Kieran and all the kids were honoring God. The people who weren't even swimming were honoring God. We're starting to talk about stewardship in church, which is a huge, big word. And um, what that means is leaving something better than you found it. So leaving a person better than you found him or her. 
or leaving an event better than you found it. And so I want you to remember that no matter what you have to give, if you feel like you are a Katie or if you are a Karen, you have something to give. I want you to look at your hands. Look at your hands. These are Makono Yayesu. They're the hands of Jesus. Makono Yayesu. So you get to touch people with Jesus' love. You get to help people pick up things. If they have, has anyone ever dropped a backpack and like spilled the contents of their backpack on the floor at school? Yeah. Lunchbox. So you need to be the kids who go help your friends pick up their lunch boxes, okay? And you need to be the kids that help people with the hands of Jesus. We need to use what we have to help other people. Okay? Does that sound good? All right. We are going to go to Sunday school now. So, thank you.
share this morning a reading from the Hebrew Bible about how it is that the old priest Eli helps the young child Samuel to hear God. The boy Samuel was serving God under Eli's direction. This was at a time when the revelation of God was rarely heard or seen. One night, the priest Eli was sound asleep. His eyesight was very bad. He could barely see. It was well before dawn, and the sanctuary lamp was still burning in the temple, and Samuel was still in bed in the temple of God where the chest of God rested. And then God called out, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, yes, I'm here. And then he ran to Eli saying, I heard you call Eli, here I am. And Eli said, I didn't call you, go back to bed. And so he did. And God called again, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel got up and again went to Eli and said, I heard you call, here I am. And again, Eli said, son, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. This all happened before Samuel knew God for himself. And it was before the revelation of God that was given to him personally. So God called again, Samuel, the third time. And yet again, Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, yes, I heard you call me. Here I am. And that is when it dawned on Eli that God was calling the boy. So Eli directed Samuel, go back and lie down. And if the voice calls you again, say, speak, God, I'm your servant. I'm ready to listen. And Samuel returned to his bed. Then God came and stood before Samuel exactly as before, calling out, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, speak, God. I am your servant, ready to listen. May God add a blessing to the reading of this word. Would you join me in reading together Psalm 145, which is found on the screen there. And this psalm is a speaking of that which we've been singing, God's faithfulness throughout the ages. So if you want to follow along in your hymnal, you may, or on the screen, let us read together. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. His compassion is over all his creation. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. You know, you might want to turn in your hymnals. Uh, page 857, we'll pick it up together. Technology's great unless it's not. So page 857. We're almost at the end of the first stanza, but I'd say let's go back and do it over again. Page 857, let us read together. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all. His compassion is over all his creation. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. 
The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hands. You satisfy the desire of every living thing. All the Lord's ways are just. All the Lord's doings are kind. The Lord is near to all who call, to all who call upon the Lord in truth. The Lord fulfills the desire of all the faithful and hears their cry and saves them. All who love the Lord, the Lord preserves. All the wicked, the Lord destroys. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name forever and ever. Amen. And so we sing. Will you rise as you are able?
may be seated. Throughout this month of November, we're talking about how everybody has something to give. And uh, Grace Glover's been our, our reporter on the street. So uh, we're going to see just a little clip of how it is different people give through this church. Giving to me looks like participating in the adult bell choir, uh, helping out with the youth bell choir, and helping out with the other youth programs to make sure that our kids stay active in the church. I sing in the choir. Uh, helping is VBS. There's so many ways that you can give to any community that you belong to, uh, not just financially, but um, lending your time or your talents or whatever skills you have, or maybe it's just learning something new that can help out. Um, and I find that, you know, anytime I give in that way, I always get a lot more out of it than I feel like I, I have contributed. So it's, it's just a lot of fun to, to be part of a community like that, where, where that kind of giving is truly appreciated and uh, always needed. So you may uh, have noticed that the perspective on that shot, uh, we don't even think about the fact that every Sunday we have people in the sound booth and uh, doing technology. Uh, and I would like to thank all of our people who make worship happen every Sunday. Thank you. And I'm very thankful for a church that is so committed to caring for God's creation. Uh, we had a two-day workshop. Come on up, Coop. Uh, we had a two-day workshop uh, this last weekend, uh, which capped off a witness that people in this church have been sharing. And so we will be commissioning people uh, who are committed to caring for God's creation. And that, too, you can, you can approach, Reverend Wigan. <laughs> um, so that, too, uh, the microphone is where? Sam, thank you. So that, too, is uh, a way of sharing what we have to give. And those of you who are being commissioned, will you come forward, please, at this time? Keepers. Earth keepers are you know. Do you ever have days when you wonder why you got out of bed? <laughs> On the other hand, it can be a lot of fun. <laughs> Earth Keepers are United Methodist Disciples of Jesus Christ who have sensed God's call in their lives to a vocation of creation care. They are aware of the ecological challenges in our world today, the connections between how we treat the earth and each other, and feel motivated by a Christian faith to partner with God in the transformation of the world. This is hard and complicated work. Please offer your silent prayers of support as we present these women and men who have made themselves available to God and the church in mission for such a time as this. So friends, do you believe God has touched your heart and called you to care for God's earth and all the plants and animals in it as an earth keeper? And if so, please answer, I do so believe. I do so believe. Will you invite people in your community and church to join you in this work in a spirit of hope and togetherness? If so, please answer, with the help of God, I will. With the help of God, I will. 
Will you follow Jesus in all that you do, loving God with your whole being, loving your neighbor as yourself, and loving everything that God has made? If so, please answer, with the help of God, I will. With the help of God, I will. Will you pray for one another, support one another, and continue to learn from one another as you lead your communities and churches in caring for God's creation as an earth keeper? If so, please answer, with the help of God, I will. With the help of God, I will. Holy Spirit, you have led these women and men to this moment. We, the children of this earth, give thanks for the gifts they freely offer to care for the earth that we will one day inherit. We pray for a beautiful, healthy, and clean planet so that we may live joyfully and in peace with each other and with all of your creation. We pray that you allow each of us to join with them to offer our own gifts to work together in your name. Amen. So uh, Earth Keepers is a national, you may distribute the gifts, except I get one too, yes? Yes. Um, thank you, what a good answer. Um, Earth Keepers is a national United Methodist program. There's training being offered all across our nation and the world as a way to mobilize the people of faith. So would you join me in thanking these people who have uh, committed themselves to this ministry? Thank you. Thank you. And we each have so much to give, so as we enter into this time of offering, give thanks for the abundance God has blessed you with and for the ways you get to pass that abundance along. Let's enter into offering.
we thank you, gracious God, for this opportunity to share our gifts with those in need of comfort and healing. We are grateful to know that you will take what we give to bring hope to people in our church, in the Rochester area, and all around the globe. May you use us and our gifts this day and every day. Hear us now as we pray together. God, you are glory. We come before you to ask that you would use Christ United Methodist Church to broadcast your grace. Use us to serve you and our neighbors. Call us to boldly and tenderly reveal your glory. Stir us and lead us to be your witnesses. Wake us up and plant possibility in our hearts. We pray through the powerful heart of Jesus the Christ. Amen. You may be seated. So it is stewardship season in the life of this church. And sometimes the word stewardship makes people groan because word on the street is, from those who stand like this, that all the church cares about is money. Have you ever heard that said about church ever, ever, ever? Um, I think, yeah, thank you. <laughs> you know, the problem with having a monitor here is you have a monitor here. <laughs> um, anyway, my daughter Leah is a fundraising coach and guru, and she works as a consultant for Give Minnesota. How many of you have heard of Give Minnesota? All right then. Um, they're unrolling a powerful all-state giving event this next couple of weeks, and you can give through Give Minnesota to your favorite nonprofit like Thrive or like Christ United Methodist Church. Um, so Leah works as a coach and a mentor for nonprofits so that they're effective in raising funds. Uh, so, you know, this was not a plug for Give Minnesota. That's not why I'm telling you about her work. Although, you know. Um, so Give Minnesota coaches nonprofits, as I said, to be better skilled with partnering their vision with the ability to fund the vision that they have. And money is a fine vision accelerant. What did you say? It's a fine vision accelerant. So one of the possibilities uh, with the group that uh, they work with are churches. And my daughter wanted to know, was I willing to talk with one of her colleagues who maybe will be working with churches in the course of his work uh, about kind of the uniqueness of churches and the unique maybe challenge of raising or, uh, or opportunities in raising monies in churches. And I said, well, of course, I'm happy to talk to anybody about such things because as many of you know, I love talking about church. I've called myself a church nerd. I just am, I can't help myself. And I love talking about money. I really do. And the two things together, churches and money, look out. So the young man and I talked on the phone, and what we agreed on in our conversation is this. Story is what matters. Learning the story of a place and linking that story to the story of the past and moving that story into the future, that's what touches hearts when raising money. So I asked the young man how much he knew about the story from scripture, and he said, hardly anything. So I told him, because you get a church nerd going, and there's no stopping her, um, that our whole faith story is that, as a people of God, it's a story of incredible abundance and how it is God is faithful, God does come through, and how it is that the people of God, because we are so grateful for everything God has given us, we are taught that giving back 
is a needful way of living our gratitude. Because God has given us so much, like life, like taste buds. You ever thought how beautiful life is because you can taste things? Come on, play with me here. <laughs> or your nose, you can smell things like dry leaves and music. How is it that we've been blessed with the gift of music in life? Because we have been so lavishly blessed. What God tells us is because we know what it is to receive, we get to live in the way God lives, which is give and give and give some more because it is pure blessing to give. Everybody has something to give that blesses the community around them, everybody. And we give because we get to give. We give because it feels so good and because the world needs exactly what we have to offer it. So I told the nice young man on the phone that our, our story, any church's story, and the larger story of our faith as a people of God is grounded in the powerful dance that is giving and receiving in life. And we talked a little bit more together, and I shared with him some of what this church is doing in ministry and has been doing, because we have learned that our story of our past can help us build a future together. And as we talked, we discussed the challenge of attracting young persons to churches and new people to churches people who have not grown up in churches because for a long time this young man told me the only words he heard spoken on behalf of the church were words that felt hateful to him. So we talked about how challenging it is to have a brand, for want of a better term, that is challenging to unpack for many people who don't know the power of our story in the past and the power of our story now. So how do we build a future together? Well, I believe that we build a powerful future together by telling the story of our past forward. The scripture passage that I read earlier from 1 Samuel it is one of my very favorite passages. I turn to it often. And one of the reasons why I have given, really, I was just talking, how many years have I been in ministry? 24, did we decide? 24 years of my life to church ministry is because in this place, in the movement of Jesus Christ, I feel like there is so much hope for the future. The scripture passage from 1 Samuel is one of my favorites, and it's, it's one of my favorites because it illustrates how important mentors and companions are in the lives of those who seek to build the future. Listen, I've been a Sunday school teacher, a children's choir director, a youth and children's pastor, and I'm now a lead pastor, and I am crazy for the promise that walks in children aren't you? Come on, right? What a blessing, what a miracle that any family would come through the doors of the church and say, here, our most precious thing, why don't you love them for us and with us? So young Samuel in scripture is a miracle child. His mother prayed for a long time for his life to be, and she told God that if God would grant her a child, she would dedicate that child to life in the temple. And so when Samuel became old enough to serve, she brought her child to the temple and said to the priest Eli, here, my most precious, my most precious, I trust you to, to bless this child and I trust that God will work through this child in your company. 
So Samuel, as you heard, hears a voice calling him in the night, and thinking it's the priest, Eli, he gets up dutifully and asks what it is Eli wants from him, and Eli is confused because he hasn't called out to Samuel, and all I can imagine is how many of us have been awakened in the night by a young child, and how, how happy do you feel about it? Not me so much. Not only once, but twice, but three times until Eli is able to figure out, oh, it's God calling this child, Samuel. So he tells Samuel such an important thing. He honors God's call on Samuel's life. And he tells Samuel, go down, lay in your bed, be open to God calling you and say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. What do you want from me, God? Whoa. A huge reason why church gives me so much hope Because here in this place, we bring together elders and we bring together children and we help each other listen for what it is God might be speaking into our future. Where else in this stratified and rushed world do we gather across age and gender and class and political differences in order to help us hear and listen for the voice of God? We do that here at church. Those of us who are in the Eli stage of life, we are here to help our children and all children hear the sacred voice of God calling them into fullness of life. We want our children, our biological children, our spiritual children to know when they are away at college or when they are on the playground during the week that God delights in them, that God speaks to them, that God speaks through them, that they are precious and beloved, can we, Eli's, change the life of a child? You bet we can. Every one of you knows what it feels like to bless a child. Do you not? You do. Listen. We are called to join our story to God's immense generosity and insistent call. We who have been given so much, we get to give back. And when people of heart and means give back, lives are transformed. Here's what joyful giving looks like as shared in the book of Acts through Eugene Peterson. I love this image of the church. Are you ready? Here's here's my aspirational goal for us. Christ United Methodist Church. Everybody around was in awe. All of these wonders and signs done through the apostles, that's you and me. And all of the believers lived in a wonderful harmony, holding everything in common. And they sold whatever they owned and they pooled their resources so that each person's need was met. And they followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple, followed by meals at home, every meal a celebration, exuberant and joyful as they praised God. And people in general liked what they saw. Every day their number grew as God added to them those who were being saved. People being saved from hopelessness and loneliness, and despair, and a sense that there's so much pain in the world, they can do nothing to alleviate it. What we are saved from is a sense of powerlessness, and what we are brought into is a joyful, exuberant movement of people who are so excited to give what we can give. So here is the deal. You pair a church that knows its call to help children listen to God's voice in their life, with a church that pools its resources in order that needs in the community are met, and what you have is a miracle, and that 
is a story worth telling, and so we do. Will you run this tape that we ran at the Thrive Gala? Hear this story. It's yours. Do all the good you can by all the means you can as long as ever you can. This from John Wesley. Christ UMC has a long history doing all the good we can. The church helped to create the first public high school in the city of Rochester, was instrumental in birthing the Dorothy Day House, Channel One Food Shelf, and Charter House, and helped to found the Methodist Hospital campus of the Mayo Clinic. So when an unexpected bequest came in from the estate of Kenneth Mackinac, the leadership council of the church sought to discern what it was the church was called to offer in the midst of a growing city. After study and discernment, the call became clear. Christ United Methodist Church feels called to use its crucial downtown facilities to enhance lives through offering excellent child care and support to families raising children. We learned that in Olmstead County, there were over 1,500 children on a waiting list for affordable child care. We know that enriching the lives of children enriches our community and changes lives. By providing a family resource center with daily support and resources, as well as monthly family dinners, Thrive is committed to building community one family at a time. Child care is expensive. Because we are committed to partner with families who cannot afford the high cost of excellent child care, we determined that we would offer scholarships to bridge the gap between costs and capacity to pay. Many teams of people went to work to discern how to best deliver on the vision. The church facility needed to be radically adapted to offer an excellent, safe, and welcoming child care center. A board of directors was created to create a structure to deliver excellence to children and families. And monies needed to be raised to fund the demolition and reconstruction of one quarter of our church structure. Christ United Methodist voted on May 31st, 2017 to create a space where children will thrive. Through the months of sharing the vision and prayer, enthusiasm grew. When the capital campaign concluded, leaders were moved to announce that $1.5 million have been pledged by the members of our church. That support, along with $450,000 given through the Mackinac Estate Gift, led to the opening of Thrive Child Care Resource Center on October 1st, 2018. Thrive opened with five children and nine staff. Our director, Tanya Goretsky, has led her team to excellence. Today, we are a place for nurture and learning for 50 children and seven nine staff. After one year, we are more than halfway to our goal of helping 82 children. Thrive and Christ United Methodist Church are committed to raising money to build a sustainable scholarship fund through grants and individual donations. Christ UMC opened a thrift store on Saturday, Thrift on Fifth, in order to repurpose clothing and generate resources for Thrive scholarships. Last year, over $15,000 was raised, enough to pay tuition for one toddler for a year. At this time, 20% of Thrive families receive financial assistance in order to afford child care. The goal is that in 10 years' time, one half of Thrive families will receive financial support in order to afford excellence for their children. We truly believe that we are called to do all the good we can by all the means we can as long as ever we can. We are Thrive building community, one family at a time. Yay.
pardon me. So that's pretty incredible that this church was able to pool its resources and its gifts and its members and put in kind of a quick time this incredible childcare facility together. Um, and so we had to celebrate that because that opened about 13 months ago now. And we did. Um, on November 2nd, we had the Thrive Harvest Gala. Um, and it was very exciting. We had a silent auction, a live auction, lots of delightful food, live music, a short presentation on what Thrive is and who Thrive is and who it's for, and, uh, and we had some pledges. Um, we were lucky enough to have the event sponsored by Pete and Judy Schuler, an anonymous donor and Thrivent Financial. So all of the funds that we raised were able to go directly to the tuition assistance fund. And we were lucky enough to have this incredible church. So lots of staff and volunteer time that just materialized. Um, and several miracles later, this event happened. And I still kind of can't believe that this event happened after months of talking about it and planning it and waking up in the night worrying about it, it happened. Um, and so we wanna tell you how much money was raised that night. Can I get some help? I'm gonna need five people. Are you ready? Do you want to know? Okay. Um, go for it. Yay! <laughs> In that one night, through ticket sales, auction sales, and pledges, we were able to raise $44,466 for tuition assistance for Thrive. Thank you. Sincerely, thank you. And I want to thank Grace Glover, who is our Connections Coordinator on staff and um, a highly gifted events planner. May God help you. <laughs> so. Yeah, so what I want to say is what I hope you can feel in your heart, um, a vision and capacity changes lives. And we get to do that every day as Christ United Methodist Church. So as we are in this season of stewardship, you better believe I'm excited to talk about what's happening here at this church and what can happen right now and in the years to come because it is you are blessing in this world so as we sing this last hymn this is a song of god calling you will you answer god's call will you rise as you're able let us sing
we go from the glorious to the mundane. Are you ready? Because you gave to the Transform campaign, our bathrooms have been refreshed. <laughs> and they're open this Sunday for the first time. So don't miss that opportunity. <laughs> and I want to say this too. Um, we are in need of warm coats and warm things for men and children in our thrift store. Think about what it is you have to share. Think about how gifted and graced and blessed you are and figure out what it is you want to give. Amen and amen. Amen.